Hallelujah. We will continue to pray. Let's pray that God himself will teach you his word this morning. Let us pray. God, teach me your word this morning. God himself will teach you his precious word, the word of the Lord. Father, speak to me this morning. Jesus, speak to me this morning. Minister unto me. Minister to me, O Lord. Father, speak to me. I want to hear you speak to my spirit. I want to hear you speak to me this morning in the name of Jesus. Let's thank God. Let's appreciate him for his word that is coming to us this morning. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Our Father in heaven, we appreciate you for another opportunity to hear you speak unto us. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will speak to every heart, that every heart will be receptive to your word this morning, and that which you want us to know on how to develop ourselves even more spiritually as heaven band women. Lord, you will give unto us in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Please, let's have our seats. Amen. The topic before us this morning says, Spiritual Development of Heaven-Bound Christian woman spiritual development of heaven bound christian woman amen this morning we'll be speaking how can you develop yourself spiritually or how can you be more developed spiritually amen by the grace of god we'll be looking into how a heaven-born Christian woman can spiritually develop herself. There are principles to know, and there are principles we have to diligently follow. By the grace of God, we'll be seeing them this morning in Jesus' name. Why do you need to know all these principles? Why do you need to know it? It's because of heaven. In preparation for heaven, so that you and I can be prepared for that glorious heaven. Hallelujah. These principles are only for those who are heaven bound. These principles, they are only for those that are heaven bound. Those ones that want to go to heaven. Amen. For example, the assignment given to us that we should pray every day will be a very big challenge to many. But those ones that want to make heaven, they will pay key attention to all the assignments. Assignment that has been given out to us, they will pay key attention to them all and to what we have been telling us since this conference started. Because those are the things that will help you, that will help me to develop ourselves more spiritually. Amen. Your spirit man cannot suffer loss. When we say spirit man, we mean your spirit. Your spirit man cannot suffer loss. You must feed your spirit man daily. Your spirit man must be fed diligently on daily basis, to be heaven bound indeed. Amen? So you must get busy developing yourself, relying only on the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So what are the principles? What are the requirements? That, what are those things that you need to know and to do to develop yourself more spiritually in readiness for heaven. We'll be discussing four major reasons. 
Amen. The first one I have here, it says, study the word. If you want to develop yourself spiritually, the first one I have here is study the word, the word of God. For you to be spiritually strong, you must study the word of God diligently. As a heaven-bound woman, you must have a sincere delight in the word of God. If you don't have that sincere delight in this world, you will not even bother to study. But as an heaven-bound woman, you must have a sincere delight in the word of God. Amen? Please, let's open our Bible to the book of Psalm. Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse 11. It says, Psalm 119, verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. The word of God have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against God. If you study the word of God on a daily basis, you will not want to sin against him. He said, thy word have I hid in my heart. Your word have I hid in my heart. The word of God will keep you from sinning against him. Amen. When you have his word abundant in your heart and do accordingly, you will not sin against God. If you have the word of God in your heart, and you do according to the word of God, you will not sin against him. If you have sin in your life, you must be an enemy of God. After studying, you are not obeying, you are an enemy of God. Because you are supposed to study and to obey. It's one thing for you to study, it is another for you to obey what the word of God is telling us. Hallelujah. So you cannot go to heaven if you don't obey the word of God. You must obey every word of God. Amen. For you to be morally and spiritually pure, you must study the word of God. Your study life must be strong. Amen. Please let's open to the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 15. 2 Timothy 2, 15. It says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Study to show yourself approved unto men as well. Yes, you need to study to show yourself approved unto men as well. Study to show yourself approved unto men. Study to show, your, to make yourself an example. Study to show an example to other people. Study to show yourself an example that is worthwhile. Amen. Stop the to be an ideal woman. Study to show a good pattern that others will follow. Study to show yourself pure. Pure in heart, pure in character, pure in action, pure in thought, pure in your dressing. Amen. Study well so your lifestyle can be patterned after Jesus. When you study very well, your lifestyle will be patterned after our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Study diligently so your journey to heaven can be smoother. Your journey to heaven can be smoother. Joy comes to your heart. When you study the word of God, joy comes to your heart. 
when you read it and you obey the word of God, when you read it and you obey, the joy of the Lord comes to your heart. As we read and meditate on the word of God, the Holy Spirit reveals God's will unto us. Because in the word of God there is power. When you read and study, the Holy Spirit reveals God's love to us. In a more deeper way, you may say, yes, I love God, but when you begin to study the word of God, when you begin to meditate on the word of God, you will see that the Holy Spirit will give you that love that you have for God. It will be deeper. It will help you that you love God even the more. Hallelujah. You will have more knowledge of God when you study his word. When you study God's word, you will have more knowledge of his word. Amen. When you spend time on God's word, or when you spend time in reading his word, studying his word, you will develop even deeper love for him. You will say, there are some things that will be revealed unto you. We say, oh God, you are this awesome. You are this almighty. You are this mighty. Oh, you will develop that love for God to want to know him more and more. Amen? Amen. So when you spend time studying the word of God, you will want to know him more. You will not want to sin against you. Will you? No. Because you love him. Somebody you love, you don't want to hurt their feelings. Someone you love, you want to do everything within your power that I don't want, to, I don't want him to feel offended. So you will not want to sin against God when you love him. Hallelujah. When, the, when you dwell on the word of God, he will reveal more of his truth unto you. Because the word of God is truth. But if you don't read it, how will you know the truth? If you don't study the word of God, how will the truth be revealed unto you? You need to study his word so his truth can be revealed unto you. Also, your spiritual eyes will be enlightened. Your spiritual eyes will be enlightened when you study the word of God. When you dwell on the word of God, your spiritual eyes will be enlightened. Will you be have more knowledge of him? Amen. Please let's open to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4. I'll be reading verse 12. Hebrews 4, verse 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, passing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and interest of the heart. Hallelujah. The word of God is quick and powerful. I'm telling you, the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. How can you go to the gates of the enemy if you don't have the word of God? You want to battle against Satan, you don't know the word. How will you go to the gates of the enemy if you don't have the word of God with you? How will you go to the gate of the enemy? Your mind will be fixed on Christ and his word. You can no longer be tossed here and there when you study on God's word. You, nobody can throw you here. They will throw you there. But when you have the word of God, you know the truth to yourself. No one will be able to toss you here and there. Hallelujah. Your mind will be fixed on, on Christ and on his word. You can no longer be tossed here and there. You will be fixed, you will be focused, you have known the truth. And the Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Amen. The book of Joshua, let's open to the book of Joshua chapter 1. I will be reading two verses there. Joshua 1, 
verses 8 and 9. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. When they say the word, this book of the law is talking about the word of God. They said, this book of the law here is referring to the word of God. It shall not depart from your mouth. It shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. It means as you study, you careful, carefully will be thinking about that passage you have read, about that word of God you have read, in order to know and understand its principles. When you study and you meditate on the word of God, when it, the word of God is that you have read, that you are studying, you will think about it. So, oh, I've read this verse before, but now you are meditating on it. You will think that you will know, ah, ah, I've seen this one before, but it will be revealed to you in a more better way. That you, when you meditate on it day and night, when you ponder on the word of God every time, you will see that you will get to know him more. You will be careful thinking about the word of God. You, you want to go to heaven. In order for you to go to heaven, you must commit yourself to obeying God's written word. In order for you to go to heaven, you must commit yourself to God's written word. And the word of God is applicable to all. The word of God, it is applicable to all. Study the word of God to be strong. Study the word of God. When you study the word of God diligently, you will be bold. You will be bold. You will not be afraid of what Satan can do unto you. When you study the word of God diligently, you will not be afraid because you have the word. Because you have the word, you have the word of God with you, you'll be bold. You have the word to combat with Satan. Because if you don't have the word, how can you combat with Satan? How can you fight your battle when you don't have the word of God with you? But when you have the word, you'll be bold to face the Satan. That Satan, you'll be bold to face him and fight the battle and win the battle. Hallelujah. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we saw that he conquered and silenced Satan through the written word. He used the word. So what about you? What about you? If our Lord and Savior used the word to conquer Satan, what are you doing? You cannot go to the gate of the enemy without the word of God. You must study the word in the name of Jesus. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. You have to commit God's word in your heart. Commit the word of God in your heart and use it when necessary. You must commit the word of God in your heart and use it when necessary to fight against the enemy. Amen. If you don't study the word of God diligently, you are a weak Christian. Yes. If you don't study the word of God diligently, you are a weak Christian. So you must study the word of God. Amen. If you don't study, how will you be able to face the enemy? Like as we have said, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Yes, you know, we have an assignment to study from the book of Acts of the Apostles to Philemon. How many of you 
we are faithful doing it. And the leaders we are to, to study it with the commentaries. So how many people that are seated there are faithful doing this? How many of us are faithfully doing this? God is looking at you. God sees the intent of your heart. You must show complete moral purity. We must show complete moral purity and spiritual integrity at all times. Yes, by the grace of God, I'm in the book of 1 Timothy. After Timothy, we have Titus, then Philemon. I'm saying this to encourage you. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. The second point we'll be looking at is the book. Uh, the second one is pray diligently. Don't forget the first one, study the word. But the second one, pray diligently. Do you know, girl, God answers prayers? Do you know that God answers prayers? Amen. Yes, God answers prayer. But do you know that God always wants us to come to him to ask for his will for our life? You must know that. The Lord always wants you to come to him so that his will will be revealed unto you. But if you don't go to him in prayers, how will you know what God wants you to do? How would you know? So you must know that God wants you. Amen. So we know that God always answers prayers. And God always wants you to come to Him in prayers for His perfect will for your life. Amen. Please let's open to the book of 1 John. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. 1 John 5, verse 14, it says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. You see that God answers prayers? The Lord answers prayer. If you call on him in prayer, because that is the confidence that we have, that when we call on Christ, he will answer us. He will hearken unto our prayers. Yes, we have this confidence that when we call him, he will answer us according to his perfect will. So, why don't you want to use the principle to communicate with God daily? These principles of prayer, use this because we have the confidence that he answers us, he hears us, and he will answer us. So use that to communicate with him effectively. In the book of Colossians chapter 4 verse 2 says, Pray without season, be devoted to prayer. Continue in prayer. Be devoted to prayers. Be committed to prayers. The book of Mark Mark chapter 11, the book of Mark eleven twenty four. Mark eleven twenty four says, Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Whatsoever. That means it's a, a blank check. Whatsoever, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe. Whatsoever you ask God in prayer, in faith, in prayer, in faith, believe, and you shall have them. Prayer places you in position of communication between you and God the Almighty. Prayer places you in position, you know, of communication between you and the Almighty Father. Some of the things mentioned in here by the grace of God were received during personal prayers. 
So prayer is very important. When you pray, it places you in the, that position of communication between you and God. Amen. So you must commit yourself to prayers. You cannot go to heaven without diligent prayers. No. You cannot go to heaven without diligent prayer. Your prayer life must be diligent. Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. When you spend time in prayers, you are battling with the enemy. When you spend time in prayers, you are battling with the enemies. When you, you are talking, to, taking the battle to the gate of hell. You are taking the battle to the gate of hell. When you see yourself praying, I mean diligent prayer, not just all these two minutes prayer, five minutes prayer, all this prayer that nobody even hear what you are saying. Nobody's hearing you. I mean diligent prayer, fervent prayer. When you do that, you are taking the battle to the gate of the enemy. Hallelujah. You are taking it to the gate of hell, and we shall win in Jesus' name. It is a spiritual battle. It is always a spiritual battle, and you must fight to the end. You cannot give in. You cannot throw in the towel. You must fight and fight to the end. You conquer devil through prayers. You conquer devil through prayers. Diligent prayers. When you have personal prayer, personal relationship with God, you will know more knowledge of Him because you are seeking Him in prayers. Hallelujah. When you do all this, prayer will become easy for you. It will become easy for you because you are seeking in, in prayers every day. When you do that every day, you will see that the day you don't pray, you feel uneasy. Whenever you don't pray, you will feel uneasy that something is really wrong with you. The, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Persevere in prayer. Persevere in prayer, my sister. Pray steadfastly. Pray steadfastly. Continue to the end. Be strong. Be determined. Develop a sincere passion for prayers. Develop a sincere passion for prayers. If you don't develop that passion, you will not see yourself praying. But you must develop a sincere passion for prayer. In order to devote yourself to serious prayers, you must be alert of the things of, that will deprive you from praying. There are some things that we not want you to pray. Number one is Satan. Satan doesn't want you to pray. He will want you to get busy. Get busy doing things that do not profit the soul. So you be aware that Satan will not want you to pray. The second thing is that the cares of this world, the pleasures of this world. Oh, when will, when will I get my children's school fees? How will I do this? How will I do that? When you begin to ponder on those ones, you will not have time to pray. And the third one is the flesh. The flesh, you know, wants you to pray. The flesh, you know, as we all know, this body can, it doesn't go to heaven. It's your soul, your spirit. But the flesh remains here. So it, it will slow you down. The flesh doesn't want you to do anything spiritual. It doesn't want you to do anything spiritual. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So we must be aware. Satan, the pleasure of this world and flesh, we distract you from praying diligently. Even from praying at all. The flesh will deprive you from praying. In order to develop yourself of this kind of prayer lifestyle, you must discipline yourself. 
If you want to develop yourself to the kind of prayer lifestyle we are talking about, discipline must come in. Discipline must come in. You must discipline yourself. You will be able to, because if you don't discipline yourself, you cannot be spiritually matured. For you to be spiritually matured, you must discipline yourself. After that, you will have Christian victory. Hallelujah. You must develop passionate devotion to prayers. You must develop personal, personal discipline, devotion to prayer. Be committed to prayer. You must develop that. Develop passionate. Uh, you are so passionate, passionate about it. If you have not prayed, it's like you have not eaten the whole week. If you have not prayed in a day. So you must develop personal devotion to prayer and it must be based on the love of God. The love that God has towards us. He came and sent his only son to die for us. So you must develop that passion for prayer based on the word of God, the love that lo the Lord loves us. And for, because of gratitude, you are appreciating God that you have died for me, you saved my soul. Those things should even encourage you to pray. Those things should encourage you to pray. Many are still in the world. They have not come to this truth, but the Lord has found you. The Lord has saved you. Those things should encourage you to pray. Those things should help you to have passion for prayers. Amen. You must labor fervently in prayers. You must labor fervently in prayers. Do spiritual battles in prayers. Be devoted to prayers. It is doing prayers you can bring your needs to God. It is doing prayers you can bring your needs before the Lord. You will bring all your needs. Lord, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need that. But if you don't pray, how will you bring your needs before him? How will you bring your needs before the Lord if you don't pray? So it is through a prayer you can bring your needs before him. You must wrestle in prayer. You must wrestle in prayer because the Lord is nigh unto those that are nigh unto him. It's nigh unto those that call upon him. When you call upon God, it's nigh unto you. So the Lord is by your side. Call on him. He answers. If you are not to your prayers, in the name of Jesus. Amen. As every bound Christian woman, you have plenty opportunity to pray. As every bound Christian woman, you have plenty opportunity to pray. You can't do without praying. But you can't do without prayer. No, you cannot do it, but and uh, you must do it diligently. You cannot do without diligent prayers. When you are cooking for your family, you are praying. You are cooking, you are in the kitchen cooking, you are, you are praying. You see, when you are cooking, you are praying. When, when you are doing laundry, you are folding the clothes, you are praying. You are cleaning the house, you are praying. When you, when, maybe you are driving, you are praying. You are in the bus, you are praying. You are flying, especially when you are flying, and you have many hours. Turn into prayer. It is a great opportunity for you to pray. It is a great opportunity for you to pray. When you are in the train, you are praying. You, when you go to stores, some stores, instead of them playing all these demonic songs, you are there praying in your spirit. You are praying at all times. When you are driving, whatever you are doing, cleaning the house, attending to this or that, you are praying. Be committed to prayers. When you go out shopping, 
you go out shopping, instead of listening to all those men, some people, they will turn on the radio, maybe sense things that does not even profit. You be praying. You just be praying. Pray without ceasing. Keep praying. If you're in the bus, you're praying. During prayers, the Lord can show you the foundation of your problem. I'm telling you. During prayers, the Lord can show you the foundation of your problems. If we even, he can even show you the, the solution to it. He can show you the solution to the foundation of your problem during prayers. But if you don't pray, how would that be possible? How would that be possible? So keep praying. It is very rewarding. It is very rewarding. Pray also in the Spirit. Pray also in the Spirit. It is your personal prayer time. So go ahead. Pray also in the Spirit. It will help you. It will ginger you up. It will help your spirit man to come alive. Pray also in the Spirit. Prayer is good. Prayer is good. Yes. Part of the assignment we were given this year is for all members to pray for 35 minutes every day and the leaders one hour every day. So that makes it 365 hours for the whole year. 365 hours for the whole year. Right? Yes, we have 365 days in a year. So if you have prayed for one hour in a day, by the middle of the year, you will have prayed half of it. And then by the end of the year, you will have prayed 365 hours. By the grace of God, the Lord is helping me. As at now, when I pray, the Lord has helped me to pray for 190 hours around there. So you too can do even more than that in the name of Jesus. And we are yet in April. We still have many months to go. The Lord will help you in the name of Jesus. But this, I tell you, it calls for spiritual discipline. It calls for spiritual discipline. Amen. That will take us to the third point. The third point. And it says... Self-discipline. Self-discipline. Part of the spiritual development, number one that I have here, is fasting. Fasting. Please, let's open to the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 21. Matthew 17, 21. It says, I'll be it. This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. But by prayer and fasting. Some people, they cannot fast. After two days, after three days, they are tired already. They are tired already. How will you make heaven? If you cannot fast, how will you make heaven? There are some tough situations that you may need to add fasting with your prayers. Yes, there are some tough situations that they will not move an inch except you, you add fasting to it. He said, I'll be it. This can go out not out, but by fasting and prayers because they were trying to cast out the devil. No, but now when you ask fasting with prayer, you will see how fast that situation, that tough situation will be dissolved. It will be resolved. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Those, but you must be a disciplined woman. If you cannot fast, you are not disciplined. We are talking about self-discipline now. If you cannot fast, that means you are not a disciplined woman. How will you cope? 
have you cope? If you cannot fast, amen. We were asked to fast this January. We were asked to fast this January. How many of us obeyed? How many of us fasted all through the assigned days? How many of us fasted? To face off the situation and to be fully equipped for heaven, there must be self-control. There must be self-control in all you do, including your eating habits. Some people, they cannot do without eating every day. So, you must have self-control, including your eating habits. Amen. If you want to make heaven. Like I said before, these principles are for those that are heaven-bound. You must seek heaven with all diligence. Amen. The second one I have under self-discipline is control of tongue. Control of tongue. Thank God we had that yesterday to the full by the grace of God. Please let's open to the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. Colossians 4, 6 says, Let your speech be with grace thought that he may know how you ought to answer every man. Let your speech be always with grace seasoned with salt. You must discipline your mouth. Sister, you must discipline your mouth. You don't talk too much. But you, you, don't, you don't talk too much. If you are an heaven-bound woman, control her tongues. She control her tongue. So you don't talk too much. Don't be a talkative. Don't be a talkative. Control your tongue. Because of heaven. Control your tongue. Because of heaven. We're going to look again in the book of James. James chapter 3, James chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. James 3, verse 5 says, Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasts great things. Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindled, verse 6. And the tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that is defiled the whole body and set it on fire the cause of nature and it is set on fire of hell. See? See how much trouble the small member can cause the whole body. See how much trouble small member of your can cause the whole body. With that, your tongue, you lie with it, you exaggerate with it, you slander with it, you gossip with it. Even some say all those dirty jokes with your tongue. Only woman, dirty jokes. You can set the whole body on fire. That is what the Bible is telling us here. With that small member, that small member, because of your unruly tongue that you cannot control, please let's be careful the way we, we use our tongue to avoid all these troubles. Let your speech be pleasant. Let your speech be pleasant. Let your speech be encouraging. Let your speech be kind, kind and worthy to of being identified with Christ. Yes, your speech, let it be something that is worthy of being identified with Christ. It should be set an example of godliness. 
So that the suffer of godliness and decency for all who hear it. Your speech should be pure. Your speech should be pure. Free from corruption. It should be free from corruption. Amen. Like salt. We all know the usefulness of salt. It should enhance and add flavor. Your speech should enhance and add flavor. Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Your speech should give people a taste of an appetite for God. Your speech should give you a time, an appetite for God, that they always want to hear you speak. Because when they hear you speak, it gives them, it draws them closer to God. When they hear you speak, it draws the hearers closer to God. Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The third one I have here is under self-discipline, Christian literature. Literature, Christian literature. We have many books written by our Father and the Lord. We saw one yesterday that was revealed. So, there we have many books already written by our Father and the Lord. Buy books. Buy books. Take time to study them. Take time to read them. Spend your money to gain spiritual development. Spend your money to get spiritual development. I remember my first time of coming to the Holiness Conference in Massacre. You know, I came and made sure I got books. I made sure I, I got enough books. And I'm telling you, those books helped me a great deal. Those books, they help, and they are still helping. They are still helping because each time I come, I buy books. So please, spend your money to gain spiritual development. The Lord will help you and I in Jesus' name. Amen. The fourth one I have here is avoid bad companions. Avoid bad companions, bad friends. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. It says, Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good, good manners. Be watchful of the company of friends you keep. Be watchful of the company of friends you keep. For many are out there to drain you spiritually. Many are out there to drain you spiritually, but make sure you get close to those that will help you gain more spiritually. Look for such that will help you to grow. Separate yourself from friends that will not allow you to grow spiritually. If you must make heaven, if you must make heaven, you must separate yourself from bad friends, bad companions. Because those ones, they are not ready for heaven. They are not ready. And don't let them deprive you of that, of the very that. So be very careful of the kind of friends you keep. The last one I have here said, take time to listen to messages. Take time to listen to messages. One of the things that is helping me Still, are the divine messages we are receiving from this movement. I'm telling you, you must take time to listen to these messages because they are for us. They are not for people that are already in heaven. They are in heaven already, but we are still here. So we need those messages. Take time to listen to messages. Set a goal for yourself. One of the, the last year's assignments, many of us were aware of the last year's assignment when our Father and the Lord called us here. I was among those that he called. How many have you listened to? 
And that time, by the grace of God, we were supposed to listen to 120 messages last year. And by the help of the Lord, I was able to listen to 371 messages. It takes determination. You have to be focused. You have to be focused. You have to be disciplined. Yes. You have to be disciplined. And when, when I say 371, when I know I'm, I will be busy, I will pass it. You all heard the revelation the Lord gave mommy, our mommy, mommy Linda. You know, when I'm going to do something, I will pass it. When I miss a thing, I will rewind. So I don't miss a thing. It is very important. When you get distracted, rewind. Listen to it again. And even many of them, I listened to them twice, to be sure. I think about 39 or 40. I listened to them two times, and I didn't count them. I'm not the ones I listened to. I couldn't have been able to do any of this without the help of the Lord. I give God all the praise. To him be all the glory. I'm saying all this so that you can be encouraged that yes, it is possible. You can do it by the help of the Lord. These are practical things we must do to develop our, yourself spiritually for heaven. Quickly, I will go to the benefits. The last one, benefits of spiritual development. We may not read that Bible passage, uh, but you can write it down. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. We are not going to read it. One of the benefits is that you will have temperance, self-control, meekness, to be humble. You will not, it will not be difficult for you to, because self-control will bless you, you will be calm. Even if there's time for you, there's trouble on ground, you will still maintain your calmness. Self-control. You will not be proud. You, it will be so easy for you to humble yourself. You will, you will manifest love suffering. All those things are there. In fact, if you spend time, one, some of the benefits is that the Lord will release all the nice fruit of the Spirit unto you. The Lord will release those ones unto you. If you faithfully do all these things, we are telling us. Amen. When there is a cause for panic, of course to worry, you become, like I said, the Lord will use you as vessel of honor. We are going to read the book of Second Timothy. Let's quickly turn our Bible to the book of Second Timothy chapter 2. I'll read verses 19 to 21 quickly. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that name it of the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from this, it shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and made for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Amen. You see, the Lord will use you as vessel of gold. The Lord will use you as vessel of great honor in the name of Jesus. Yeah, those are the benefits of spiritual development. God will reveal more things unto you. He will reveal more things unto you. The Lord will depend more on you. The Lord will be counting on you. Those are part of the benefits of spiritual development. God love will reveal more to you. The, you'll be a better leader. Spiritual development adds value to you. Spiritual development adds value to you. You'll be a better wife, 
a better leader, a better sister, a better mother, a better grandmother, a better servant. Amen. Spiritual development leads to spiritual maturity. Spiritual development leads to spiritual maturity. Amen. Yes, like I said, it will add value to you. You will be more dependable. People will be, they will be able to depend on you. They will be to, to entrust something into your hands. Amen. Amen. So, you will be more sensitive in the spirit. This is part of the spiritual benefit. Your spirit man will come alive. You will be sensitive in the spirit. You will be strong in the Lord. You don't show off, but you will stand out. You will be different among many. Those are part of the spiritual benefits. Hallelujah. You will be strong. You will be strong. He has brought you here in no remote. The Lord has brought you here to learn and grow into maturity. He has brought you for you to come and learn and to go into maturity in the name of Jesus. So he can depend on you. So he can use you to accomplish his purpose. Hallelujah. Because God created you for his own purpose. He, you did not, he didn't create yourself. He created you for himself. He created you for himself. You will see yourself be submissive to your own husband. Those are part of the benefits of spiritual development. You will see yourself being submissive to your own husband. Even if your husband is still a non-believer, you will have this confidence because you have prayed that God will touch him someday in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will be of great value in your home, in your marriage, in your family, in the ministry, even in your community. You will be respected and honored by your husband and your children. Amen. When you all utterly love this truth, when you all utterly do all these things, we are telling you. The book of Joshua, we read the other time, chapter 1, verse 8, he continues, later part of it continues to say, For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. If you know and obey God's word, you will be prosperous. When you obey God's word, you will be prosperous. You will be successful because you have possessed the wisdom. You have possessed the wisdom to do things right and to achieve God's will for your life. Amen. God sees your labor. The Lord sees your labor. You must be diligent. As if Christ were your hire, he was your employer. As if you are working directly for God, you must be diligent. Knowing that all the work done for the law, they are not in vain. The Lord will reward everyone. The Lord will reward everyone. There is nothing you do for God that is in vain. There is a reward for you. The greatest reward anyone can ever get. It will be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. In Paul's letter to Timothy, in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15, we will not read it. He said, meditate on this. Meditate on all this we have said today. Ponder on it and act accordingly, so that the profiting may appear unto all. Hallelujah. In conclusion, you know, we see all this earthly athletes, when they want to go for their game or they want to run, they do exercise. They exercise. They plan ahead. How much more the race to eternal life? You don't want to do anything and you want to go to heaven? Heaven will not just fall on your laps. You must work diligently for it. Rigorous exercise. 
vigorous exercise to win the crown is needed of every, every man, Christian, woman. Our personal relationship with Jesus, our personal relationship with Jesus, always desire to have personal encounter with Him, always desire to have personal encounter with the Lord. It is true that many of us, we are brought by revelations, you know, we are brought. But that was God's wisdom to deliver us from the pits of hell. But if you base yourself only on revelation, you will not last long. You will not last long because the revelation will finish. But the word of God endures forever. Hallelujah. Stop running after revelations because the devil has his own too. He has his own too. Be prompt in the service of your God. Be prompt in the service of your God. When it's time for fellowship, you don't go late. You are right there on time. You are there on time. Even before the time, because we, we all agree, 7 a.m. By 7 a.m., the Lord is waiting. Will you be keeping God waiting? No. For you to be spiritually mature, you have to be prompt at all fellowship. All times that we meet, you have to always look forward. Always look forward to meeting with the Lord. Always look forward for chapter meeting. Oh, when is the next one? You no, know, you are agile. You are useful in the hands of the Lord, in the house of the Lord, in the things of the Lord. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. You, you will not want to be late for fellowship. You will always want to be pumped. Some people are not faithful in, uh, in this. Be zealous. Be faithful. Be zealous for your God. He has saved you. What will you do for him? Or what will you do to, to appreciate his love? Be zealous for God. Serve God with your money. Serve God with your money. Pay your correct tithe and pay it always. Pay, pay it diligently. Amen. If you are not a faithful tither, repent today. The gift of God in your life will make a way for you. So don't show off. You don't have to show off. If you are diligent in all this, it will show in the way you relate to your husband. It will show in the way you relate even to your children. And others will see it in you too. Others will see it in you too. When you do all this spiritual exercise, there is spiritual victory. When you do all this, there is spiritual victory in the name of Jesus. The resources, you become bold and courageous. Amen. The more God uses you, the more humble you become. The more God uses you, the more humble you become. Because God hates the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. The Lord will always be with you when you diligently do all this. When you develop yourself spiritually, for heaven. Like I mentioned earlier about the conference in Massacre, I was in the congregation four years ago during the women conference like this in Massacre. I never knew I'd be standing like this today. I didn't know. But by the grace of God, this is what God can do. When you release yourself fully in a sense, when you release yourself fully in the hands of the Lord, it will make use of you. It will use you as the places. It will use you as the places. There are great opportunities when you truly cleanse yourself and you develop yourself spiritually. More so, the journey to heaven will be with much joy. All this I have mentioned, we help you to be holy. All this, we help you to be holy inside the heart and outwardly in the name of Jesus. And your heaven will be sure by the grace of God. Amen. I'm saying all this for us to be encouraged, for us to be focused, be determined, 
and that it is possible you can do it even much more in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's rise up on our feet. Let's rise up on our feet and begin to thank God for another opportunity to hear his word. Let's thank God for another opportunity to hear his word. Thank you, Jesus, for you have spoken to me again. Father, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. I give you praise, Lord. Thank you for your word. Let's thank God. Let's ask God for grace to be diligent. Let's begin to ask God grace to be diligent in all you do. Let's ask for grace to be diligent in all we do. Let's ask God in the name of Jesus. Ask God to, for grace to faithfully develop yourself spiritually for heaven that you must be faithful doing all this. Father, we pray for grace, O oh Lord, to develop ourselves spiritually in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask for grace. O oh Lord, we ask for grace. For grace to faithfully develop ourselves for spiritual health in the name of Jesus. To faithfully deliver, develop our spiritual life for heaven. O oh Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. We worship you. Bless your holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Father, Lord, most time, we thank you. We worship you for your word today. Thank you, Lord, for opening our eyes of understanding. I pray for more grace unto everyone here to be diligent, developing themselves spiritually for heaven. In Jesus' name. The Lord you grant unto us much, much grace to cleanse ourselves, to be ready for heaven at all times in the name of Jesus. Father, release your grace unto us to study your word, to be diligent in prayer, to live a self-disciplined life, and therefore make heaven at last in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you will not miss heaven in the name of Jesus. Release your grace unto us in abundance to do this, to develop ourselves for heaven. Thank you, our Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages, or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com God bless you For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior. Say
You came from heaven You died for my sins You purchased me with your blood You are my Lord and my Savior But for my sins, oh Lord Jesus, you are the living Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. Because you are my Lord and Savior. You are my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe I believe in you, you are the living Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. You Lord. are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. Oh, oh, oh. you are the living Savior. I believe in you, you are my Lord and Savior, I believe in you, you are the living Savior, you can Chased me with your blood, you are my Lord and my Savior. You left your throne above and took up the form of a servant for my sin. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. Because you are my Lord and Savior. You are my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you, Lord. Because you are the living Savior.
Savior. Jesus, I believe. 